everyone. Happy New Year. Whoa. 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 Brand spanking new. First of Jan, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. Is it? I'm Jack from Cultaholic, joined, joined by Bye. Andrew and Ross. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I. <clears throat> um, what's more, what's more jolly and in the festive spirit than AW? <laughs> now, many a- things. AW's had a mixed bag of a year. I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Started off pretty strong. Uh, everything went a bit wrong, and nowadays, uh, certainly me and Ross on the podcast, maybe yourself as well, Andrew, mm-hmm. we're not quite vibing with it as much as we were previously in the year. No, I agree. I think it is turning round okay. very slowly. I think we're slowly starting to, uh, the, the wounds are healing slightly okay. at the moment. You know, there's a bit of a scab there, but we'll pick it off and we'll get back to it's what we want. Nice it's able to see Punk. Oh. <laughs> well. What, what about you, Ross? You? Um, it's a weird time because we're sat here on the 13th of December and the last AEW Rampage we saw was the one where Takeshita took on Moxley. And it was a good rampage. Probably the best rampage that's been in many, many months. Mm. But as you said, yeah, it would start with the highs with like Cody leaving the way he did. That was, yeah, that yeah. was exciting. It was. Working without a contract and all that sort of stuff. Then we went through MJF and CM Punk. That was brilliant. Then the summer happened and meow, yeah. down it went. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it has been a topsy-turvy year. But it feels like now that Ring of Honor has had this big final battle event and now maybe we're going to split things off and just get back to basics. Yeah, yeah, hopefully so. Uh, yeah, we are recording this shortly after the announcement that Tony Khan made that there'll be a weekly Ring of Honor TV show on Honor Club, as well as archives and all that sort of exciting stuff. But we're talking about AEW, not Ring of Honor, and we're talking about nine pitches for AEW in 2023. We've each brought three to the table. We'll go around in a circle, and we'll be left with nine lovely pitches. Remember, of course, it's not what we think is going to happen. It's, it's what, what we want, want to happen. happen. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Ross, actually, it's you first. I was about to start reading there, but it, no, Ross first. I should say as well, we haven't conferred again. Well, well, we didn't confer in either of the 2023 pitches videos, so there could be some similars. But if there's not, good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to kick things off with one that I started writing that basically turned into a tree. Because I started with the stump, and then it went up into oh, several no. different branches, much like a tree does with the branches. So the, here, here's me tree, everybody. The stump of this pitch is to stop using tournaments as booking crutches. Mm-hmm. Mm. Holding themselves up like crutches do. When in doubt, get away storyline. Bring the tournament in. I don't know how many tournaments we've had in 2022, but it feels like a joke as to how many we have had. I hope that's actually true in what has happened in real life. I'm not saying this about the Owen. I think the Owen is a nice tournament to stay with nice reasons and all that sort of thing. But the Eliminators and stuff like that, and just that just seem to be thrown in there when they can't think of a better idea, is like a storyline wise. I think they need to be gone. It feels like AEW. Right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go balls deep here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a turn of phrase. Uh, it feels like AEW have forgotten it and maybe have lost the ability to tell stories up and down the card as the air has gone on. Mm. And when they have told a story, in the latter part of the air especially, more often than not, it's been properly rushed. I'm thinking, well, when I wrote that sentence down, the first thing that came to my mind was the acclaimed and Mark Sterling's boys yeah. with the trademark. That should have lasted at least three months of, <laughs> of them, like, you know, selling merchandise mm. that the acclaimed couldn't do because they trademarked the scissor and all that sort of stuff. But instead, that was paid off in a week. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. One week of the acclaim not being able to use their trademark. <laughs> You've also got ones that drag on for way too long without anything happening. Yep. I like, might be going to mention oh, that. Sorry, there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I covered all bases bit. here. Bit, um, bit. Yeah, but it just it feels like they've forgotten what they were doing mm. compared to the previous years of their history and their company. I don't know what the current structure is in AEW behind the scenes at the moment, but Tony clearly needs a few more creatives in there to assist him with the, and I'm going to put it down here, the structuring and the pacing of the TV shows, and more crucially, the storylines and the arcs of the characters. Yes. Technical terms being used. I remember the days of everything in AEW being connected, one universe, all in sync. I want to see those days return because now we live in a world or an AEW universe, you want to use that term. Uh, many stories feel like they exist in their own pockets, connected by very few, like very thin, very flimsy threads. You walk down the corridor, in that, well, imagine a metaphorical corridor, right? Mm-hmm. You walk down a corridor, in this little room over here, we've got Britt Baker and Soraya. Walk down the corridor some more, we've got the, uh, the factory and the best friends. Walk down the corridor to the big hall at the the bottom that's where the js and bcc feud lives and in turn all that sort of stuff nothing seems to connect 
mm. too much anymore. I know some of them do up and down the card, but back in the day, back in the, the first two years of the company, every single thing up and down the card it felt like was happening, you know, in one world at one time and everything connected in some way. Um, and I think this uh, that issue in turn comes down to the mos- massive roster and that needs addressed too. I'm not going to sit here and say, fire people! But what I'm going to say is make a proper Ring of Honor roster and a proper AEW roster and do trades between those pairs of rosters when you like it. Have a wrestler transfer window a couple of times a year like the football does. I think it's a brilliant idea. And then the massive roster size in turn, you know, this is me tree going off at the branches. Um, it made me think of the ideas Jack just said there that when they're not working, they keep going with it. Whereas in the start, and I'm thinking of the Nightmare Collective, for example, they saw that wasn't working and wasn't resonating with the fan base. Oh, so they mm. cut it off and pretended it didn't happen. Yes. Um, mm. So that's, oh yeah, these days we get Andrade and Roosh, um, anything Matt Hardy's been involved with in the second half of the year especially, stories that are rubbish and they keep going and keep going and yeah. keep going and they just should be ended and we just don't care anymore by the time the end comes around. Mm. Even if the stuff with Press 10 Vance with the, uh, the, the little Brody, that was good, that, in a vacuum, but the journey it took to get there oh, was so painful long. as out. Um, and that was the end of my tree pitch. <laughs> <laughs> It started off with the tournament. It's like two and a half pitches. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's branched off in many ways. Oh, yeah, it was good. It was a stream of consciousness. A tree W. Oh, Oh, you see? Um, I'm going to give it a yes. It was several bits, but I agreed with all of them. Yes, I do apologize. No, no, yeah. it's all good. No, I've gone into business myself. I, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I've gone for... I've gone Workers' for... rights. <laughs> <laughs> Muffins. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, absolutely, yes, as well. It sort of leads into what my second pitch uh, today is going to be. Um, do your second pitch first. You want me to do my second pitch? Pi- I'll do my second pitch I'll do my second piss first. Uh, <laughs> but it's... Uh, it, 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 you you're right in terms of there's a lot of flimsy things, um, all connected by very tiny minor threads, uh, nothing of real consistency. Um, so sort of just trying to get to point from point A to point B, mm. but almost in the most convoluted way possible sometimes, mm. and it just feels a bit unnecessary. Mm. So it's a yes, it's a yes for me. Go on then. I'll go in and do my second piss first. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So just more consistent and meaningful storylines within AEW again, wow. because as we were talking about before, we've, we we have seen that and we've seen a few this year, but I think they've done it absolutely brilliantly beforehand. Uh, and, and I think it's something that needs to come back. So um, basically we've, as I've just said, we've seen that AEW can do this evidenced by, evidenced, evidenced by the Elite and Hangman storyline. And perhaps AEW were aiming towards doing something similar as well with MJF and Punk before all the stuff fell apart uh, involving the AEW title in the, between them two as well. But it feels like more times than not, the storylines are booked more on the side of the challenger chasing for the title and less on what comes after that as well oh. to capitalize on such a momentous occasion yes. too. Spe- specifically, for, I think for the baby faces, the baby, like the, it's the chase for the baby faces, right? And then once they get the belt, then that's when Tony Khan poos the bed a little bit, I think, in the in the booking. Not to cut you off too much there, but what I've seen I've seen people suggest that Tony Khan gets people over and then once they're over he's like, right, next, next yes. toy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't maintain. Yeah. yeah. So uh, as I put here as well, obviously injuries can occur and plans have to be changed on a whim, but having I think in place a great maybe six to one month uh, sorry, six to one year plan for maybe every wrestler that Tony Khan feels is going to be an important integral integral part of the company that year would go a long way. I know things change. I know people get behind other people, um, you know, just out of nowhere sometimes someone just gets over. But I think something, if there's like a base plan there for at least a good few wrestlers going forward, at least you've got something solid to go off that people can follow. Mm. Um, We see a lot of people come and go week to week on AEW TV as well. They'll wrestle a few times on Dynamite and Rampage then before audience can really connect with them. They shuffle back to like AW Dark and Dark Elevation and everything just feels rushed, as Ross said, or done for the sake of it to fill time between the next person getting their next big feud or title match. And that like is good in some respects because it demonstrates so many of the incredible talent that AEW has and we get to see people we might not get to see very regularly on the TV. But to me, without the consistency of the meaningful storylines, everything just feels slightly inconsequential. So there needs to be some stakes, there needs to be some threats, there needs to be time to build those naturally through a month or two's worth of character building, maybe more between competitors. Because we get, as you said, we get the uh, the tournaments, don't we? And it's like, this person's going to challenge for the AEW Championship next week. No build. Yeah. Literally and, just a tournament. That's and you it. sometimes get those title matches where the title's on the line against random man who's just turning up for the first time. Yeah. What's that lad with the grey hair called? Ring of Honor. 
He challenged for was it Hook's title first, and then maybe got oh, a different title. Oh yeah, 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 well. yeah. Was it Mance? No, not Preston. No. Well, I guess like yeah, Preston Vance. Oh. Is... No, no, Mance. Mance, Mance Warner. Mance Warner. Who, no, yeah, oh, yeah, Mance Warner. I'm not awake today. I don't know who did. There's been a few, so did I don't know which one. Who was that fella? One of the, um, the the varsity athletes, not not Tony, but the other one. One of the varsity ones. The varsity athletes, not the varsity blondes. The varsity oh, athletes. JD. Oh, JD. Not JD. No, he's bald. The Whatever one, he's oh called, man. Tony Nese's tag team partner got a, ta- a title shot just because he turned up. And there's, there's the, wasn't it like a, a, a reality celebrity as well? That's it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He That's came it. in and, and yeah, it was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, okay. I want a shot at title. Cool. It, can, it can be done well, whereby, you know, the storyline went with MJF and who was it who took on Nick Gage? It was Jericho. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's where it's used that well. That was cool, yeah. Jericho Nick Gage. Brought, yeah, he brought Nick Gage in, didn't he? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a terrifying man and that fit the story. But when the yeah. Josh Woods. Josh that was Woods. It. When Josh Woods <laughs> is being brought in just for a random title shot for no reason, that's where I think the issue is. A bit, a bit daft, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so many of the wrestlers on the roster have a pool of history to delve into as well, like stemming from other companies elsewhere on the indies and everything. And sometimes they get it just right where they'll tell sort of the like a, a nice, concise part of their history. They'll tell it in, you know, like the bits where they film it before the big pay-per-views and they're like, this has happened before. This is why we're fighting blah, 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 like we've built off that from here. And they do a really good job of that sometimes. And others, they either just like stretch certain storylines out a bit too long, like the JAS and the BCC, like Ross said as well. Or they just don't give enough time to really dedicate a build to something that feels earned or less one-sided. And just, I think something very much needs to change in terms of perhaps Tony does have a plan, six to six months to one year plan for a good select few members of the roster. I know, as I said, that's a bit difficult to have because injuries and all sorts can occur. But if there's just something in place rather than it feeling like it's just been pieced together sort of week by week, it would be a bit nicer. No, I agree. There's like chocolate or something. I was going to say, what what's that? that? Yeah, I, I noticed this yesterday in a voiceover. Yeah. I reckon it was Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a yes from me. The, this is this feels like a very business-like pitch. So does, far. everyone's it? given really constructive mm. feedback to Tony, uh, but it's a yes from me. I agree again. That might be Bovril, you know. Oh. From who? From Tom. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> I just my mind went to like one of the more northern lads because <laughs> Bovril. Oh, oh. I just sit in here on my own. <laughs> me and Joel like together all over the table. If you move your paper, I was no, it's sh- not shocked and appalled yesterday when oh I was like, "My goodness, oh. new year, new start." Apparently, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hmm? So yes for me. Thank you. Uh, me too. Yeah, thank you. And there's not <laughs> so, much too much to say. But mine's also a, a one more of an overarching, not a specific yeah. storyline or anything. But there is there is one of those later on. Uh, but this is a right. So there's too many titles. There's too many wrestlers. There's too much going on. There's only one possible solution I can see: brand split. Whoa. Whoa. I know. Now that Tony's told us we're getting weekly Ring of Honor on, on a club, I'd make Rampage. It's so we know. That, so therefore, we know that Rampage is not going to be Ring of Honor. Rampage It's still going to be an AW show. Uh, I'd make Rampage its own AW brand. Maybe different colored ring robes, new logo, really set it apart. <laughs> then move the TNT title over there because Rampage is on TNT. And also, this might divide opinion, but move the main women's title over there because Dynamite's on TBS, so the TBS title mm. should be on Dynamite. But the main women's that, and then I think in doing so, you'd force more of a spotlight to be put on the top of the women's division by having it like on a show where the main men's title isn't. If that makes sense. Mm. Um, this means that it get a boost from maybe the star power of the likes of Soraya, but it also means that Tony would have to do two things. Uh, having it as the highest belt in the pecking order would force Tony to give more time and effort to storylines in his main women's division, and it would also force him to invest in new female stars. Maybe thanks to the Forbidden Door, you could have some names from the Japanese scene, like Kairi. She's just Kairi now, mm-hmm. but Kairi's saying. Uh, maybe popular indie names like Ali Catch. Maybe WWE cast-offs like Naomi. Maybe even... I've put here the legit bus, Sishy Bunks, as we yeah. want Sishy Bunks. Yeah, Sussy um, Bunks. Impact Wrestling Zone. Also, without this turning into a WWE style thing where there's too much focus on authority figures historically, maybe have a pair of authority figures for one for each show who aren't quite seen as often but step in when needed, more like your Jack Tunneys of the world or your Commissioner Gorilla Monsoons of the world. Mm. Mr. Bingley. When a problem arises. Beasley. Yeah, Beasley, from whatever World of Sport. <laughs> Um, I like the idea it, it, following this example of Rampage being Arn Anderson's show uh, mm. he can because he's a bit oh, he's, he's sensible but he's not he's a bit mad at the same time so also a year or two down the line we can have him going rogue and maybe trying to oust Tony Khan of a, what a storyline Dynamites can maybe be Dustin Rhodes or someone like that someone respected nice um, so brand split Rampage get the w- main women's belt and the TNT belt 
Yeah. Makes total sense. Does. Thank you. Don't know what to say. No, I agree. Like, it's, uh, I think that's a really good way to have people have more time on TV rather than just Dynamite feel rushed in terms of, like, we we get matches on Dynamite, but mm. often more often than not, we know the ones that are going to be cut short and the ones that are going to go long. So it would be nice if Rampage, you know, uh, we're able to see some nice TNT title matches on there because it feels like that's sort of been pushed to the side a little bit recent. Well, actually, well, no, with the Samoa Joe. very so. recently, Joe, but yeah, yeah, but before that. Uh, it was with Wardlow and everything. Bless Wardlow him. was really over and then. It, yeah, know, and then it just, yeah. yeah. Um, well, so he feuded with 20 lawyers. That's another example of what you were saying earlier about he, Tony Khan can get them there. Yeah, and then. But then when they get there, one. next yeah. one. Yeah. And it was difficult for, for Wardlow as well because obviously, you know, when he, when he turned on uh, MJF, everything was sort of taken away from him when MJF sort of left the company and we didn't really know what was going on for a little he while with him. Spotlight stole his spotlight. Bit, yeah. And then it felt but like he couldn't the, really get the, it back. The next few straight away was with 20 lawyers. Yeah. It was like, oh, it was, it, it was daft. I don't it? think it was all MJF's fault. It, no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a big guess. I think that would be a nice way to sort of have a bit more focus. We're on all really all clever. Divisions. We're all really good and clever at this. <laughs> Ross, AW Shills as well, remember? We yeah. are, we are. Ross, can you keep it going, the good form? <laughs> Pitch well, number two. Mine's about Rampage, because when I did a straight to hell with AEW's Evil Uno back in 2021, oh. he sort of spoke about Rampage. I don't know if it was on air or off the air, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Um, <laughs> he basically said Rampage was going to be an accoutrement. To, uh, to Dynamite every single week. If they couldn't do stuff on Dynamite, it would build to a half an hour match taking up half a rampage and a few little, little bits to tie the loose ends from that Dynamite. Again, that could have been set off the air, but that was the original atten- intention. So I've just bit my tongue there. The original intention of Rampage. So I want Rampage to go back to its original intention, according to AEW's Evil Uno, on or off the record. I hope it was on. Uh, this feels <laughs> weird to make a thing now. As I said earlier, we're sat here on December the 13th, and that was the best Rampage for a while. Last Friday is where sat here where uh, Mox took on Takeshita. Uh, things are definitely changing, but have they definitively changed as we're sat here? We don't know because it was just one episode. Mm. Will things continue? By the time January the 1st comes around, you might be saying, Ross, you're talking bollocks. And if I am, that's good because my point might have come true. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, yeah. Nothing g- is given <clears throat> time to breathe on Rampage. Some things uh, that happened have like obvious plot holes, which just wasn't a thing in the first couple of years of AEW. By and large, Rampage, and I, yeah, I'm going to go balls deep again, everybody. It's just been bad television, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we get things that were promised, but they just don't deliver. And the, the biggest crime of that one this year has been Jade Cargill, where she was like, Nyla's taking the title hostage. Oh. If you don't give me that back, I'm going to take Rampage hostage. And she turned up, Nyla didn't give it back, and then she left within five minutes politely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the end of the segment. That was the end of the segment. <laughs> um, so basically, I want to get Rampage and Dynamite properly in sync back with each other, because mm. there are certain elements like Hook, whereby largely all of his stuff is on Rampage and you don't really see him on Dynamite. I know that's changed more recently, but for the first few months of his run, he was solely on Rampage, wasn't he? So it'll get things all back in, in sync, make it that nice little accoutrement that it was intended to be back in the day. Things should be given time to breathe because when you see 13, 12, 13 things for every single hour, you can't remember what number three was. Yeah. Whereas if you see three things an hour, you remember all three, don't you? So just yeah, slow, ca- calm down, Tony, on Rampage. <laughs> calm down. I like that idea a lot because um, you could even very occasionally. Do you remember when it, you, it sounds like when NXT was originally just one hour? Yeah. And it was a really tight hour. Mm. And remember there was one episode where it was like uh, Balor and Nakamura or something. It just went the whole hour. Wrestle the you hour, could yeah. Occasionally have that. But no, I like that idea, and it's it's a yes from me. Yeah, it's a yes from me because it does remind me of when Rampage started, and we got like uh, Christian Cage and Kenny Omega for yeah. the Impact oh, title, yeah. and that was such a good match, and that's sort of what it felt like. Like that was given time, but then we also had like two matches, I think, uh, either before or after that, where you know there was still like a, a decent amount of time dedicated to that, and it was more focused then. Because now Rampage does just feel like we didn't get everything on Dynamite we got to put it all on and then like yeah. it just feels like the spillover from dynamite that they've got to like finish to then get to the next week of wrestling yeah um so yeah i really really like that as well there we go. next one from you please brian so mine's more of a storyline <laughs> Brian Bedondi is a great character. He is very good, very good. Uh, mine's more of a storyline thing this time, right? So with the AEW champion talking the other week about a week about ushering in the era of MJF and beginning his own reign of terror in 2023, I really want to see this capitalized on and put into full effect. So one thing that excites me a lot about the year ahead is that MJF is a great storyteller and seems to really think about the nuances and callbacks to previous feuds or life events he's been through. 
implementing them in such a way that both builds himself as a character and also his opponent at the same time in such a way that everyone has a meaningful feud and more often than not comes out looking stronger and better for it as well. In MJF's case, maybe more dastardly. So during, uh, during his promo in which he uh, decks our Sir Billion William, he decked him out, knocked him out cold, didn't he? And said he's going to defend the title very rarely, alluding to we, the fans, having to put our hands in our pockets and purchase a pay for you to see such a miracle happening. Well, if that's the case, then maybe we aim such a claim in a certain direction. Woo! So with AEW having four big pay-per-views a year, that could set up a perfect opportunity for AEW to really focus on the building of their own homegrown talents. Oh, my God. During the start of the year after presumably retaining his title against Ricky Starks at Winter Is Coming, an unhappy Maxwell expresses his distaste with the state of professional wrestling and the joke AEW has become within the last year. <clears throat> he states that during his time away from the company and even considering the conflicting circumstances surrounding the situation, he watched the weekly AEW product like a hawk. There was an MJF-sized hole waiting to be filled, and yet nobody truly stepped up to the plate. He basically presented the locker room with an opportunity of a lifetime and served it up on a silver platter for them. And what did he see? Nothing but a bunch of WWE rejects trying to keep themselves relevant. For relevant? Relevant. relevant. For relevant shame. Never forget. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. And that wasn't the saddest part, however, to MJF. No, it was the fact that no one, uh, sorry, not one of the other so-called pillars of AW showed any sort of balls. They're supposed to be the future of the business and and the future of the and f the future of professional wrestling. Well, by the time the bidding war of 2024 comes around and Max jumps ship to jolly old jolly old Saint Nick's camp, those pillars will be nothing more than rubble and dust. Since MJF is like Atlas, right? He's carrying the weight of the future of the company on his back from day one until day gone. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's that sounds right. like something you would say. That's good. <laughs> That's right, Rose. So this could then kickstart a program in which throughout the year we see MJF defending his title at each pay-per-view pay against one of the other three pillars of the company. Oh, my God. Within those periods, we could also see MJF becoming more despicable during the reign. Like, he brutally attacks legends like Arn Anderson, <laughs> uh, Sting to get to Darby Allin, uh, ruining a retirement celebration maybe for Dustin as well, which then sends him, as we talked about on my other oh. bitches, over to WWE. You mean the one that comes out tomorrow? Yeah. The one that comes out tomorrow, everybody. Um, and telling him to, like, he tells Dustin, like, oh, relay a message back to Cody and Regal for me, will you? Because uh, I'll be seeing them very soon. Oh, yes. So winning his pay-per-view matches against the other pillars in dubious fashion to keep both Maxwell looking like a devilish heel and the ba baby face is looking strong too. Maybe after uh, all the pillars are dispatched, we finally come back around to maybe like Eddie Kingston because at the sort of when we had the, the reveal of the big Burberry belt, uh, MJF was like, he'll never be a world champion. So that's a little something to go off there. Or it could even tie back round to Wardlow as well and we can finally have like a really satisfying way to end all that. Uh, who he like Wardlow more than deserves redemption, I think, after MJF's, MJF stole what should have been his spotlight. Not all MJF's fault, as you said. Bit of Bookend's fault there as well. I think the match would have ended that way anyway. Do you reckon? Playing on no playing situation. <sighs> Just MJF getting squashed by yeah, big scary Wardlow. I was, I don't know. I feel like with how long it played out, maybe there should have been a a little bit more. <laughs> or maybe it leaves it open ended for there to be a bit more, at least anywhere Ooh. down the line. So it can all culminate in MJF finally losing the title whilst also building up everyone else in the process too. Fair enough. Um, I like it. It's a yes for me primarily because um, they. I like the refocusing on AEW's homegrown yeah. stars. Yes. I like it for similar <clears throat> reasons. Yeah. Well, the exact same reasons. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, the exact <laughs> yeah. same reasons. And I like the, the day one until day gone. That's that MJF, if you're watching, you can have that. Fire burn, ready you to ignite. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to do what you did and I'm going to switch two of my order around now because my third pick, which is now my second, mm -hmm. is about MJF's title reign. Ooh. So it's a storyline. Here we go. MJF goes on a reign of terror for most of the year. Big title defense at Revolution against Brian Danielson because he wants revenge mm -hmm. for what he did to Regal. Mm -hmm. Big title defense at Double or Nothing in a four-way match between the other three. Oh, nice. That's a good idea, yeah, though. I like that. I haven't put quite as much focus on the homegrown title. Mm. But a little... Big title defense at All Out against Kenny Omega because um, by that point, 
they can, they can have lost the six man belt by that point. Uh, the odd TV defense as well. Maybe a scare against Hook. Maybe a novelty defense against Sting. Maybe he beats Pack at Craven Cottage. Can you imagine the <laughs> scenes if he did that? Bloody hell! I know, yeah. That northerner's lost. <laughs> Can't believe it. Um, they're maybe all, they're very posh around Fulham. That's what Maybe a forbidden door defense against someone New Japan wouldn't mind him beating, but I've put I don't know who that is. Maybe Suzuki. Oh God. Maybe an aging Tanahashi, and then I've put actually maybe the best bet is Ibushi. To be fair, because New Japan doesn't seem to care about Ibushi as much as they should do. Mm. Um, anyway, MJF somehow squeaks by with the win each time, and after the all-out victory against Kenny Omega, it really seems like there's not going to be anyone who can dethrone him. Step forward, any guesses? Okay, I'll just do it. Wardlow. Eddie yeah. Kingston. Oh, Eddie King. oh, or, yeah, uh, Wardlow would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Though. But Eddie, Eddie Kingston. Kingston better, though. I think so. Um, who wins a mini four-man tournament, not a big one, <laughs> to build some momentum <laughs> and earn a title shot. I have him, but not a big one. He did say not, not a big, big one. one in cup. Um, the match is set for full gear, but near the start of the show, Eddie is attacked backstage by a man in a balaclava. Tony Khan doesn't want him to wrestle, but he insists, and by the time the main event comes around, he drags himself to the ring, all bandaged up, like Terry Butcher in that one England match that time. Back and forth they go, back and forth, and eventually, to the delight of everybody, Eddie wins. Also, this is maybe in New York, but not on Long Island, so there's a bit of a Derby feel of her, like, it's a bit mm. MJF. Not Derby Island, like a Derby. Like yeah. Football derby. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway, Eddie's done it. What a legend. All the faces come out and celebrate with him. The next week on Dynamite, he's all banged up, but he comes out and cuts a passionate promo about never giving up, no matter how close your career looks to ending. And winning this belt has really taught him something. He used to be a loner. He used to be a selfish guy and never really trusted anybody. But this title win has restored his faith. He'd never have reached his level if it weren't for the help of all the friends he's made in wrestling over the years who've spurred him on. So he wants to make a toast now to the AW locker room. And he's interrupted by Tony Khan. <gasps> no. <laughs> Tony looks genuinely rattled, which I've put in brackets. Shouldn't be hard for him to pull off. <laughs> and he says, Eddie, I'm sorry, but your first title defense is right now. And from behind, Eddie is jumped by the balaclava figure from backstage at full gear. And he unmasks to reveal... No, it's, no don't say it. He's going to say it. Don't say it. He's going to say it. Same punk. punk. John Moxley. Oh! oh! His friend, his best mate. Oh! Because he's just in that speech about friendship. Mm. And his friends go, no, not CM Punk, don't worry. <laughs> um, Eddie puts up a brave fight, but obviously is too exhausted. And in the end, Moxley ultimately wins and walks out. We don't know why, but the next week we learn why. Tony, this is with Moxley being Tony's mouthpiece, because I don't trust Tony to carry the promos <laughs> on his own. Tony didn't see Eddie as champion material to represent his company. He's given him these Japanese dream matches and personal grudge matches like the one against Punk, but he's not at the level of a champion, not in 2023. So he turned to John Moxley, and Moxley mentions always being the company guy, delaying his own vacations, spending time away from his wife and child. Well, now it's time for him to prioritize himself. And as far as he's concerned, by giving him this snap title shot, he and Tony are even Stevens now. It sets up not only Eddie versus Moxley in a rematch, but overall the story of Eddie versus Tony, which with the help of Moxley as a Tony mouthpiece, might be AEW's Vince Austin. <laughs> oh, that is a large claim. Yeah, that it is. is. A big but that's how it. And eventually Eddie would get his revenge and win the belt back. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, baby. That's a nice pitch. That is a very Thank nice you. pitch. That's a nice pitch. Thank you very much. That's a pitch not to pitch on. Would I think people want to boo Moxie is my only worry because he's such a great man. <laughs> he's just I a bloody he's, great I, man. In, in that situation, I reckon so. It depends how heavily Tony's involved with him. Yeah, yeah true. The more I don't Tony, want it to the be too Tony. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want Tony to be... Tony's not... For better and worse, Tony's not Vince McMahon. No. <laughs> so I don't know if he can carry off. Yeah. But yes, thank you very much. Yes. Delightful. Um, Ross, your third and final pitch, please. Stop messing around and get Miro in the world title picture. Oh. He's easily the most captivating promo package mm -hmm. package in AEW. It's complete and utter bollocks that the re Redeemer with his neck of sand, his flexible wife, who should remain a myth <laughs> and not become an on-screen character. I need to make that clear. I don't want Lana in AEW. Okay. I, don't know, I don't think it will work. Um, and disdain for the God who gave him the neck of sand isn't at the top of the card. It's an absolute travesty that he's not. So let's just get him in there. The overall presentation has been nailed by Bang on after the bollocks was kip and over and done with and after the TNT title run was like came to an end. It's just stopped. 
Mm. And it's like the promo packages have been sporadic, but they've also been great when they have been on the show. He could be the right man as a baby face to take down MJF. That's how high I rank Miro Ooh. as a baby face. Because you hear when they put the crowd noise in the back of his little promos, he does this little quip that he's not like overtly trying to be funny with. It's just funny because it's him saying it. You can hear the crowd laughing, can't you? Yeah. So there's baby face legs in the gimmick, but also because again we're recording this on December the 13th, and it's tomorrow night, isn't it, when uh, MJF defends against uh, Ricky? Ricky, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, just just in case he could also be the heel possessed by the god he wants to take down and be the evil heel guy to take down Ricky Starks don't worry in a certain period of time so this I'll just could, cover all bases. This could really come back to bite me, <laughs> but I'd really be surprised if Ricky... Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, they know. They know. Oh, they they know. know. I don't think there's much of a chance, do you? <sighs> no, I don't think so either. Nah, me neither. No. So I'll go with the first one. He could be the oh, baby face take down Ricky. MJF. <laughs> MJF Watch it happen. breaks Imagine. his leg in the match <laughs> and they have to <laughs> give it to Ricky. No. No, no, no. But yeah, Miro, there was the report last week that I think got debunked by the Zodiac Killer himself, uh, Dave <laughs> David, I know, yeah. yeah. Um, that uh, he... You w- knew? Well, yeah, I was in the... When you oh, first right. started saying that, I was, I, I I was the one knew who... You knew he was, the, <laughs> he was the Zodiac Killer? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, a reference yeah. from the Colour Wrestling yeah. podcast that Dave Meltzer is the Zodiac Killer. Um <laughs> There was a report from him that I think got debunked. Well, no, he he debunked the report saying there was no creative plans yeah. for Miro, even though he's been free to return since about June or something like that. So just get him back. It's he's too yeah. good. It's it's I don't know what else to say. So the story I think that alluded to there by Meltzer was that Miro they wanted him to be the the one who eventually put Ricky Stocks over on his journey to the title. Yeah. Shot, so what? But instead. It's Ethan Page. But Miro was like, I don't really know if that's yeah, going to help yeah, me. Yeah. And then Ethan Page went, I'll do it. And I think that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was yeah. The, the gist of it. That's very good, though. Yeah, I like that. Who doesn't want to see, <laughs> yeah, does see Miro? <laughs> it's a short but sweet Back. one. No, but there's no it's yeah, a really yeah, nice one, fair. though. Yeah. yeah. It's a yes from me. It's a yes from me. Thank well, you very what much. What a pitches video this is. What a pitches video. I feel like Flawless. we're breezing through this one. Flawless. How long has it been? It's 32 minutes on the record. Really? Hey, it's all right. Yeah, Andrew. My oh, final one is dead short, but oh, right. I thought we might like This is to... the first time this has ever yeah, happened. Yeah, it is, yeah. Genuine. Look how <laughs> big that is. That's not even wow. that big. And it's double spaced between <laughs> the lines. <laughs> it actually is. Um, so obviously we know that we're going to get, the UK are going to get an AEW show in 2023. Um, so I thought it might be quite fun to do a bit of a match card book. Like yes, a little bit of fantasy true. booking and stuff for it. Come on. So I'm keeping the belts on all the current current champions, even you yeah. know if we don't know exactly how things will play out from now until when the show actually happens. Uh, and I've got I've got six matches so far. But if you want to throw little bits in here and there, oh, God, let's just that. go for it. Okay. So I've got I've obviously I've put like the the UK people in there as well to get the pop. You know what I mean? Mm. Yes, yes. So we've got an All Atlantic Championship match: Orange Cassidy versus Kip Sabian. Nah. No. Crap, any kid. You know, no. Whoa. He's really good. Uh, just the bookings crap. Yeah, his character. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's ca- he's character. He needs to go back to being... But he's, but he's, but he's know wrestling. When, you know when, like, Conor McGregor fights in Vegas and all the Irish go over? Yeah. All, the, all the Norwich folk would come down mm. in so, their all, yellow... All kip, the the kip. thespian types from drama school. <laughs> oh, it's the whimsical Kip. Yeah. He's just like you and I. So whimsical. <laughs> Uh, I've gone for uh, a lot of them are pretty much just title matches. They'll all arrive on penny farthings, right? Yes, <laughs> they all look like in Black Adam with the like those kind, yeah. you know, like in the in in the old timey movies where it's a car that's got like the wooden wings on the side, <laughs> and just like fly like that, and they just come down like that. We've got a TNT ladder match, all right. I've and in the ladder match, I've put Samoa Joe, obviously a TNT champion, versus Takeshita versus Pac. Ooh. Versus Miro Ooh. versus Malachi Black wow. versus Eddie Kingston. Wow. You sycophant. I know, right? <laughs> so that good. might be quite nice. Mm. Yeah. Quite nice. Quite. That might be quite nice. Understated. Um, TBS title match on there. I've made it a four-way match. So we've got Jade Cargill, the champion, versus Soraya versus Chris Statlander versus Athena, who, when I wrote this, obviously now she's become Ring of Honor mm. Women's Champion. But I thought if there's anywhere to sort of maybe dethrone Jade Cargill in a oh. sort of match like this, could be in the UK with someone like... Oh, I, would I think, oh. though... Singles match, Andrew. Surely. You reckon a singles match? Gotta be, surely. You keep her strong, though, don't to you? To dethrone her. Oh, it's I guess. Be, it's gotta be a star making that's a good. Match. That's a good point. But I thought it might be, because I think people want to see Chris Statlander do it. But also maybe in the UK if you get Soraya in the mm. in the mix, it could make things exactly. It could make things a little bit interesting. All the Norwich lads who've come <laughs> down for Kip Sabian are also going to be like, yeah. go on, Paige, yeah, <laughs> the whimsical um, Paige. <laughs> sorry, the whimsical Soraya. Yeah, we finally. Yeah, sorry, no, that's all right. We finally get the match between Brian Danielson and Zack Saber Jr. Oh, in the Ook. 
Uh, we get a women's title match. This is where everything blows off, oh. presumably. Uh, like, we actually start the feud, and this perhaps is the end of the feud of Jamie Hayter, the champion, versus Britt Baker. Nice. And uh, the main event for the evening would be Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay. Oh! Hang Isn't on. that Wrestle Kingdom? It would be a rematch of Wrestle oh, Kingdom. Well, it could be something a rematch. happens, right? <laughs> at Wrestle Kingdom, where the match doesn't ever happen. You're not going <laughs> to so have it in England. You're not going to not say no to that twice anyway. Are you? Yeah. You're still going to want to say it twice. Or? Best of seven. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a yes from me. Of Thank course. you. It's a yes from me because well. I'm actually worried that that they're by the sounds of it, it's not clear yet. But is there? There's rumours that their England show is going to be more TV tapings rather than a, a big pay per view. Oh, is it? Don't know. Don't know. That's not mm. confirmed. I'm not. I think I've just heard this. I saw a thing by one of the cool Twitter people okay. that was like the dynamite was in London and the rampage was in a bigger arena in Manchester. What? Which okay. Makes it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would, they, I'm sure they'll still stack the cards. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but I like your big su mm. super show. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Su super show. Su With the whimsical kip. Yeah. With the whimsical, the whimsical kip. Well, it's a yes. Yeah, it's a yes for me. Same. Yeah. Right. Well, we're flying. Thank you, guys. We're Thank flying. you. Just not the Jake flying. Cargill one. Yeah. Just, that's got to be a single. Uh, maybe I was, yeah. If she's losing, she's got to be a single. Who would she lose to, though? Who, out know. of those four, out, uh, well, sorry, out of those three, Soraya, Chris, or Athena, who would you like it to be? Oh, those three, mm. Statlander. I think Statlander yeah. as well. You well, throw Serena in there, it's like, she's going to do it for the UK, but then she doesn't. Only because Athena, I was listening to a new theme, and it calls her the goddess of love. What? Oh, that's not Athena. That's Aphrodite. Right? Yeah. Oh, they've Athena's, made a terrible Athena's mistake. Athena's war and peace, no, that malarkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I should she, rewrite those oh. lyrics. Oh. Naughty, naughty. Learn your Greek mythology, <laughs> please. <laughs> um. Wow. Do you like Greek mythology, pal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got a war. A couple of weeks ago on the podcast, um, Matthew. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Is there, is there? <laughs> we were just like, no. like Greek cool. mythology. Do you, no. Are you using Greek mythology? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an A-level in classical civilization. I just kept it quiet. I lied. <laughs> I lied to him. Why would you do that? Didn't want to be a nerd, right? I didn't want to be a nerd. Didn't want to be a nerd. <laughs> I don't know. Of course. I just, I knew that I hadn't played God of War. Mm. So mm. I didn't want to let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, if you're watching, I'm sorry. He doesn't watch. He's not watching. Uh, but I, I actually am in the Greek mythology, yeah. Got an A at A level. Right, my third and final pitch <clears throat> is, uh, oh no, that was the MJF one. I've, I've swapped them around, yes. No more press conferences, brackets, <laughs> or change them majorly. This year was a huge one for massive news stories in wrestling, and a theme I often saw on Twitter was the criticism of wrestling journalists at press conferences, mainly for not asking hard enough questions. But I find the very concept of AEW's press conferences weird. All Out was the only one that's of any real consequence, and it was a bad thing, and it stopped AEW's momentum dead for a while as a result. So the Full Gear one, as a result, was incredibly safe and controlled. So mm. I tuned in thinking, it's going to be drama, and it's just really not. Like, MJF swore a bit, and I was... Mm. Um, but not only do they usually feel quite pointless and self-congratulatory as well, I think it's a lot of wrestlers coming out going like, oh, I've just had an absolutely brilliant match, to be fair. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, fair enough. Um, they usually feel quite pointless and self-congratulatory. They're also weirdly ill-fitting in tone. WWE's recent adoption of the trend is weird too. Now both promotions are basically saying, right, the storytelling bit's over, the fake show is over, now this is the real stuff, with a bit of scripted character work still in there. I've said that it's bollocks, and I think it risks diluting the action we've just seen, because it's like, show's over, now we're breaking character. It's like, you remember the last season of Game of Thrones, where mm -hmm. immediately after the episode, well, immediately <laughs> after the credits, it would go to the directors talking about the, de the creative decisions they'd made in writing you the episode. You want to know that. The dragons mm -hmm. are real, aren't they? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, or at least have that like as a YouTube series, but not straight after the show. I just found it tonally weird. Um, and that's the same here. So if I've put AW should either do away with these entirely, or if there is really a need for immediate post-show content, which I understand, then take a leaf out of New Japan's book and hold entirely kayfabe press conferences mm. instead. Uh, maybe not as all-encompassing as New Japan's because uh, you often get interviews in New Japan with like every single wrestler on a big card, whether they've won or lost. Uh, I think that's too much, but that's because New Japan... Uh, has far less in-ring promos and sports entertainment storylines, so they need to tell their stories through just the matches and just the press conferences. But in AEW, I think they could get away with just chucking a few wrestlers on there, the big winners and losers of the night, and maybe one or two they want to showcase as well. They can have some arguments. They can be a brawl now and then. They could pay Melter to take a bump. Imagine the fun. <laughs> but I think they either need to get rid of the press conferences or just make them an extension of the show and just totally mm. kayfabe. Yeah, that or just have it with Ooh. Tony Khan, <coughs> or just Tony, yeah. just Tony, and have it air on like a delay, so he can if someone if if Denise Salcedo goes, is Sam Punk a dick? 
They can cut it out. They, they can cut it out. Hey, you know, Tony, Denise Salcedo here. <laughs> is CM Punk... <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Just in, in a positive tone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I understand. No, I totally get yeah, it. Yeah, because I get how the that, that rash, the rationale that you know that we've just seen the show. I can't mm. give you words out now. We cut, we've just seen the show, and now we're seeing this thing which feels like that's real compared to the, the show mm. we've just seen. So I think if we just have Tony there saying stuff that we want to hear, like from the the, the boss's perspective, answering the actual question, yeah, 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 that the yeah. journalists want to ask. And if he wants to have one cut out because he doesn't want to speak about it publicly, mm. then he's got time to do. So yeah, I think that's another way he could go with it. But yeah. KFA is probably the best way to go, isn't it? I think KFA mm. because we saw in the latest one with MJF. MJF was very much in KFA and just it was the best like, part of the press. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then afterwards, like you said, it, it all of a sudden just switches in tone and you're like, ah, yeah. what's going on? And, and someone's like, when's the next whatever, Tony? And then Tony's looking off camera going, John, when's the thing? <laughs> yeah. It actually happened. Yeah. yeah, it was weird. Um, so, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think that was one of the things when we went to Clash at the Castle and we and we saw the press conference afterwards. Oh, you've been there yeah. in oh, person. Oh, guys, oh, I've been course. there. It, it was very much, it was still, like, they were still very much their characters. They felt a little bit more relaxed, Roman definitely. Roman scared everyone. Yeah, right? They, they were still a little <laughs> bit more relaxed, but they were still very much, like, did you like, acknowledge Roman at the time? I, I, yeah, yeah. How could you not? <laughs> I just, he was terrible. And then I tackled him outside. Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Took him down. Was this when Byron Saxton was nice to everyone? Byron Saxton. He made a splash. Everyone was best talking handshake. about Byron. Best handshake, best handshake, best suit. Go on, what happened with the handshake? His handshake was just very, like, it was like, not, not like. That's a nice swing. Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, he's not like, I'm going to crush your hand because I'm a big boy. Is he a big bloke? Yeah. He's, uh, he's tall. Oh, oh, he's a big man. Oh, so yeah. I give him, like, a. So it was never one of them. It was never like a little, a little. Just a little. So the wrestler hands. I don't just want to touch you, kind of thing. It was. Yeah. It was very Byron's nice. Man of the people. He is. Yeah, he is. Fair. Very nice suits. Mm. What a guy. But yeah, they're very much stayed in character. Like I said, they were a bit more relaxed, like a relaxed version mm. of themselves. Um, but they they were still there answering questions as their characters and, and who they would like to. I guess they have misrepresented WWE's a bit because they're they're not sat there going like, well, this decision was made because this person was injured. Mm. No, they don't do that. Mm. It was in character a bit more, yeah. wasn't it? Even though Triple yeah. H was answering questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see him up close? Well, as, as close as... Was he we when did you see him stood up? Yeah, he's a dog. Everybody. So they put them in this room, right? Oh. This is an AEW. I don't know, I'm trying to fill time now. But like, <laughs> we were in this room, but they put him in the room with the lowest ceiling you could even imagine. So you've got <laughs> Tyson Fury there. Life, yeah. mm. You've got Tyson Fury there, and like this ceiling bit's coming down. Oh, like yeah. That, he's got to try and... Oh, like, you see Tyson Fury in person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Fantastic. What a tall nine, boy. He's a tall boy. He's a very tall boy. Wow. Just be dead. Let me give it to you one more time. What's that? Get low. Get uh, low, low, get low. Okay, You'd just be Derek Chisora, but I've learned through listening to a podcast about the boxing that they're pals. Yeah. You're just getting him a payday. Yeah. I guess ah. lots of boxing's probably like that at the high level. Well, you're telling me I got bitten on the arse by that. I was went like and David saw yeah, David Hay and Chisora with a defence and whatnot. That was all, real for you. Yeah. 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 Oh, he's going to be world champion one day. I love him. Yeah, they made oh, friends after. David Hay. Do you not think that through combat they'd earned respect for each other and he changed his mind no it was no. just pure <laughs> professional wrestling <laughs> that I thought was real so I went through the kayfabe bollocks for a second time <laughs> well, we've ended that lovely pitches with a chat about boxing which is interesting um, but thank you very much everybody for watching this video those were our nine pitches for AEW in 2023 uh, it's all Jesus man I'm not with it today Ooh. I've been drinking too much sherry last night I think this is New the Year's the Eve last, well yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is the last video that we've sh we're shooting today, so it's all right. No, for you as well? no I've got voiceovers to oh, do today. No. Oh, wait. I've got another video to shoot as well. Christmas Bloody content. Hell. It's cracking. Well, just the seat alliteration, is it? Uh, I thought good. it was the pun because of crackers. And mm. that as well, I guess. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Leave your thoughts, <laughs> opinions. Leave pictures of, leave some pictures we're of your all... own in the comments section down below. Oh, I hit the screen there. Oh, Joel. <laughs> And we'll see you. Oh, should I try and hit the camera like Razor? No. Um, and we'll see Go you. On, do it slow. Go on, softly. do it. And oh. then it can be the ending. You've got this, Jack. Joel's holding the camera. Jack. And we'll see you. Paper knocks it over. Very soon. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh! oh!